So now we're going to talk about applique. And when you applique a piece, the basic, basic situation is you're taking a piece of fabric that is wrapped around a piece of paper for the English paper piecing, and you're attaching it to the surface of your block. So in this situation, I am working on J9, and J9 has these little footballs right here on the corner. So I am going to connect the edge visually, and I've already got my fabric all worked out directionally, so this is going to be, in theory, in line. It's hard to line it up on the 45 degree angle. So I'm going to place this on the point here, and then I have a space here, but this needs to point towards the corner. And it's hard for you to see it on the video because of the direction, but from the angle I'm at, you can see a shadow between the block and the piece. So I am going to place this where I want it to be. And then what I do, because we're dealing with paper with fabric wrapped around it and paper with fabric wrapped around it, so I'm going to take a stapler and I'm going to staple them together because paper and paper can be stapled together. So I'm just going to slide my stapler in there and push it down. This way you have two points of connection. If you pin it, your it the pins sometimes will make it stick up and then when you applique it down, it doesn't lay right. This will keep it flat and then you get two points of connection so it doesn't pivot as much. It may pivot a bit, but not nearly as much as if it only had one point. So then, now once these are placed, then I can start with my stitching. So now that I've got my pieces stapled down, it's time to actually stitch them down. So I'm going to be working from the middle part of this. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start in the middle of this shape somewhere. And I'm going to take my needle, and I have to have my knot buried somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch so that my needle comes out right at the edge and my knot is on the back. So I'm going to pull my needle through somewhere in here and then my knot will be buried. So something to the, to the effect of this. I don't normally do it that way. I'll do it, I'll do it like from this way, but that way you can see what I'm doing. So I will pull this through, and now my knot is buried. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push this down and see where this goes, and I'm going to stitch just on the inside of where that hits. I'm not going to stitch on the outside of it. I'm going to stitch just underneath the actual shape, and then come up between. So what I'm doing here is, this is my piece and it's hiding my needle, but my needle's just underneath, and then it's coming out through the edge of the shape. So we've got this coming in here, and it coming out through the edge of the shape, so that I'm stitching it down just like that. So I've, come, I've got that coming through. I'm gonna pull this through, and I'm gonna do this all the way around my shape. This way you're gonna hide your stitches. And because the paper's in there, I've got a depth gauge. I have had it once before where I have stitched into the paper, but you can feel the resistance. So you just pull your needle out and try again. Once, and see that right there, I just went through the paper. So I'm going to come back out and get the underside of the fabric and come out right at the edge. And so this, and I'm pulling as I go so that my stitches are pulled tight and they're not loose. I've had it where I didn't pull much and then when I actually wanted to pull it couldn't because it was too big. So, And so you can see how this is forming, I hope. You have maybe that's focused. You have the stitches right in there and then this is sti sticking down. 
So I will just continue to do this all the way around. When I get to the point, when I get to the point, I'm going to try to do it at the point and then stitch right at the point so that it makes sure that that's down because once the paper is out, you're going to lose your shape. So I do want to make sure that I do the point as best as I can. So I'm going to do that. And sometimes I do it twice, like one on one side of the point, one on the other. This one I don't do. It's not big enough to warrant that, but if I have a thickness issue. And so I'll just keep it turning. I'm right-handed, so I want to work from my comfortable side as I go. And so I will just work around this shape. As I go around my shape, I want to make sure that when I stitch to this fabric that I'm just getting the fabric. A couple times I'm noticing that I'm skimming the paper. So I'll go into the fabric and I'll lift up so that I can get just the fabric. Because the idea is to have the papers be removed easily. So I don't want to stitch through the papers on the bottom portion and I don't want to stitch through the papers on the shape. And then when I get to this point, because of the way this design works, I want to make sure that I stitch into the same color because visually it needs to touch that color. Now, something I didn't have a problem with at the other side, as I'm doing this, when I'm doing triangles especially, this is, this is a minor example, but when I'm doing triangles especially, I have a whole big tag to deal with. So I will stitch up until this point. That gives me kind of like a wall of stitches that I can then push my tags underneath very carefully. The smaller the points, the more you have to stuff this under. This is not a terribly small point, but points such as D12 come to mind, and I had a heck of a time with that, and the point where I actually cut away too much fabric and had fraying problems when I did mine, um, but it's all a matter of patience is really how you do smaller points. You will eventually get there It just if you don't get frustrated, but it's a matter of just trying to get stuff stuck under there. So once I get to where I started, which I'm almost there, I'm actually going to stitch past that point. So I started right here. I started right here, and I'm going to stitch to about here, just so that you have a couple stitches overlap for security's sake, I guess would be the way to say that. And the thing I try to do with my needle is I try to keep it on my thimble so I can push it easily without having to have it. The reason I use the thimble is so that it doesn't go through my finger because I've had that problem before too. But for me, I use I usually use this section of my finger and a lot of thimbles usually have a ridge there. So I had to get a different kind of thimble. But you can use whatever is most comfortable for you. So once I'm done appliquing my piece down and I've gone a couple stitches past it, I'm going to wrap my thread around my needle three times. One, two, three, and then I'm going to stick my needle in that spot that I just came out, and I'm going to go underneath the paper, and I'm going to pull my knot to the edge, and this is what I would classify as a hand quilter's knot, oops, pull my knot to the edge, and I'm going to pull it through the edge of the paper, right this way, it's a small enough piece where I can go out the other side. Sometimes I'll go down the side or however it works out to come out somewhere so that you have a long enough tail after you cut it. So I'm going to pull this so that I have a knot. And then if you hear that pop, that means it goes through the fabric underneath. So then all I got to do is cut this piece and I'll pull it tight so that it, it is stressed. And then when I cut it at the edge without cutting the fabric, because I had pulled it, it springs back underneath, and I don't have to worry about the tail that way. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some kind of a staple remover. I use a crappy pair of scissors. This particular pair of scissors can't cut thread. I use it for my tape. And so I'm going to pry up the staples very carefully from the back 
a lot of time I have the staples on paper. This particular time I have it in the fabric. And then I'm going to push these through with my thimble because, you know, metal. And so then I have this little lip on my thimble and I'm going to put it underneath my staple. I'm going to pull out one side and then I'm going to straighten out the other side and gently take it out of my paper and, and discard it. In order to get my basting out, I will take my scissors and there's two knots here. This is the knot that I started with because it's not attached to anything. This knot's going to have two stitches on each side, or one stitch on each side. I'm going to cut each stitch. I'm going to cut this side, and then I'm going to cut the stitch on the other side of the knot. And then remove the knot. Okay? Then I'm going to take my stiletto and pull up the threads and take out the thread basting section. Maybe. Apparently there's a little knot there. So in this case, I am going to snip this stitch and pull this out because there's some kind of a catch in there. And there you go. I may have stitched through my thread without knowing it when I applicate it, which happens. You just got to make sure you remove it without killing your applique stitches. Okay. Alright, so I've got all that, and this is my other, most of the time this will pop out because I cut it, apparently I didn't cut it this time, but then I've got my knot left for my initial, and if I just pull on it, all of my gathering stitches that are underneath there, that are being held, will let go, and I will be able to take out my entire thread in one pull. And that's how I get out my thread basing, and the only other thing to do, once this is placed in its spot in the quilt and then I can remove the papers on the back side without cutting the seams this is going to be an interesting trim job without cutting the seams here I'm going to have to cut away a seam allowance from here so I'm going to end up cutting I'm going to end up cutting on the back I'm going to cut the fabric in the back here so when I do this from the back I'm going to take my papers out and I'm going to have the fabric exposed for these pieces. It's going to show me where these stitches are. And I have some of this in my removing your papers video. But it's going to end up cutting this section and then cutting this is a piece. So I may not even cut that at all because of the seam allowance. And then I'll cut a little bit out of this section and then manipulate my papers out. So getting papers out of this one's going to be a little complicated. Usually it's on a flat piece of fabric. And once you take, like let's say there's an applique piece in the middle of this. Once I take the paper out for this piece, I can then see the stitches for the applique piece cut with a, leaving a seam allowance and then pop the paper out for the applique piece. So in this example, I've appliqued a square onto a larger square and I've gone all the way around and done my two stitches past where I started and now I've got to tie off. Now what I'm going to do in this situation is I'm going to put my needle just underneath the lip of my paper that's on here and stick it through the back so that I've got this going on. Okay, I'm going to take my needle out and then I'm going to take my stiletto and stick my stiletto in here and just get the paper and not snag the fabric, but I'm going to make the hole bigger. And what I'm going to do is I want to expose the fabric that's underneath my shape just enough so that I can tie off on fabric. Okay, so I got a little hole here. Now I gotta find my needle. There's my needle, way over there. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing again and pull my thread through. So I'm gonna do this. All right, and so I'm gonna pull my thread through and make sure that it doesn't show, okay? And then I'm gonna tie this off like I would normally tie off 
on a fabric. I just pick up a little bit of fabric, making sure it's just this background fabric, and to make sure that I'm underneath my shape. And so I'm just going to tie off by making a couple stitches and knotting them up. And then I will trim with the tail. And now it's just a matter of taking out my staples and moving on to the next step.